hello all today we will see model analysis using ANSYS we will see uh, how to do uh, pre-stress model analysis then model analysis and uh, free free model analysis using ANSYS workbench here we will uh, see all those things with a demo and uh, we will solve uh, simple beam problem and uh, we will understand the basic in the next video uh, we will uh, take one assembly and uh, we will see the pre-stress model analysis in much detail so let's get started keep learning and doing right things in life someday they will return to your success it's a motivation for us so today's content uh, first is free free model analysis then uh, regular uh, model analysis in which we apply the supports remember model analysis is linear analysis and in model analysis we do not apply any kind of loads then we will see pre-stress model analysis uh, after that we will uh, check model mass participation factor and effective mass for free free model analysis and model analysis uh, as well then we will see different types of modes then a uh, node of vibration and what is anti node of vibration uh, it's a kind request to all the viewers uh, please subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications if you like the video uh, like it and share across the platforms to spread the knowledge uh, requesting you to subscribe it's a motivation for us and uh, your subscription means a lot for us so it motivates us to create new videos also if you want any specific video uh, please uh, do mention in the comment we will come up with that video in coming days then uh, big concept in today's uh, session we will see what types of modes we will get then what is node and what is anti node of vibration here the spelling for anti node was wrong sorry for that then um, types of modes we have lateral uh, mode then longitudinal mode then bending mode and uh, torsional mode we will see uh, these modes in detail uh, when we solve a demo problem so what is node of vibration and what is anti node of vibration so uh, node of vibration is nothing but uh, uh, where the mean axis passes through the uh, vibration profile so in that uh, your vibration profile and the mean axis cross each other that point is known as node uh, of the vibration so in this in this uh, this is the node of vibration and uh, this is anti uh, means exact opposite of this will be the anti node of vibration so so uh, if this is a uh, node then this will be the anti node of for this will be exact opposite to this so it will be just like this here okay so likewise anti node of vibration and this is a node of vibration so uh, th this is uh, uh, the point where this uh, profile uh, crosses the main axis so this is known as uh, distance between node and anti node so this distance is known as uh, from this point to the node or anti node both the distance will be same so what is use of uh, node of vibration and what is use of anti node of vibration we will see this in the next video and uh, not in today's session okay so the answer of last video question so the question was does part vibrate uh, does part vibrating at natural frequency have infinite transmissibility ratio if yes why if no why the answer for this question is all materials have some sort of damping properties and have different damping uh, 
values including air air also has some damping hence magnitude of transmissibility never goes to infinity so from this transmissibility curve if you see here as we go on adding the damping this is 10% uh, of damping this is 15% uh, of damping so uh, as we go on increasing the damping uh, the transmissibility ratio decreases so as we have some sort of damping present in each material uh, that's why uh, you can see we will never reach to infinity we have some higher value of transmissibility but it will not be infinity then today's question uh, how many ways natural frequency can be improved uh, sometimes you will have to increase the natural frequency sometimes you will have to decrease the natural frequency so requesting you to share your answer in the comment section and you will get the answer of this question in next video so let's move to uh, demo so I worked here a uh, workbench window uh, in project schematic drag and drop uh, model analysis uh, right click on geometry uh, by default it will open space claim So you can see here the space claim is opening. Okay. So uh, from sketch menu, uh, take rectangle to draw a rectangle. So select origin and then uh, left click your mouse button and then uh, just move the mouse to pick the next point. So you can type the dimension and sp uh, hit spacebar uh, sorry hit tap to uh, change the dimension and input the dimension you want after that uh, come out of the sketch plane if you want to view perpendicular to the screen you can click on plan view it will be perpendicular to the screen then uh, return to 3d will convert the closed sketch into a surface so here you got the surface click on the surface uh, by default the pull command will be activated you have to just drag this arrow and input the value of desired extrusion so I am putting 100 here and uh, when dragging uh, keep pressing your left mouse button and hit enter so it will draw that much height uh, and then after this press escape to come out of the command now you are uh, done with the uh, beam modeling here so I will close this go to model double click on it otherwise you can right click and uh, you can say edit It will take some time to load the geometry from a space claim to mechanical okay so we have the geometry here by default the structural steel material is assigned to the beam so uh, what we will do is uh, we will do the free free model analysis so I will uh, show you the mesh settings in the mesh settings uh, make sure you are using the higher order elements that is quadratic uh, it is important and make sure uh, 
when you generate the mesh you have at least two elements across the thickness here we are having three elements across the thickness and uh, you can check the order of uh, element uh, by uh, picking the uh, nodes here so if you select I will zoom it so you can select the mid side nodes it means uh, the element is of second order so while selecting press the control key so that you will be able to select the nodes you can click anywhere to deselect the nodes I will select face selector here for the analysis setting uh, max number of modes to find are by default 6 in a mechanical and uh, also in the output control we haven't called uh, stress, strain, uh, contact data, nodal forces, energies then uh, calculate reactions ok so if you want this quantities uh, make sure that you are switching it on before solving the model analysis if you don't want uh, that is fine uh, in free free model analysis if you remember from the last lecture the first six degrees of freedom are zero or near to zero so if you uh, plot uh, or if you extract only first six uh, modes then you will get almost all six zero so we should go more than this if you are doing free free model analysis because anyway first six will be zero and you will not be able to uh, check the connectivity between the elements or uh, between the parts so I will request 10 modes here so I will type 10 and I will uh, solve this problem please note uh, in free free model analysis we haven't applied any support any load so uh, one more thing uh, we would like to check here is uh, modal mass participation factor and effective mass so once you click on the solution uh, you will get uh, these modes and uh, once you click on the tabular data you will get the frequencies tabulated uh, in the tabulated form along with mode so first mode we have zero frequency for second mode we have zero frequency for third mode we have zero frequency if you see mode number four five and six though those are near to zero those are not exactly zero but you can approximate it uh, it as zero because it's 10 raised to minus 3 so you can say uh, it's zero but from seventh onward you can see some value of frequency so to plot the mode shape click on the uh, mode column right click here uh, and create mode shape results it will create the deformation plots for all 10 mode shapes okay so I will right click on solution and uh, will say evaluate all results okay so if you see here this is uh, 0 Hertz mentioned here then uh, it is again 0 Hertz third again 0 Hertz here you can say it is near 0 this one also near 0 this is also near 0 from here onwards you can see uh, some bending okay uh, between the elements and uh, what we were uh, discussed in the presentation that is node and anti node so if you see here about these two blue dots the model is about to rotate so those are known as nodes of the vibration okay so I will just stop this uh, so these blue dots are nothing but nodes of the vibration you can uh, turn off these elements uh, from here so you can turn off the edges so you can see like this so these are the uh, nodes of vibration and here you are getting maximum uh, let us say so anti node for this will be opposite side of this so it will be here likewise ok so I think you are clear with uh, what is node of vibration what, what is anti node of vibration uh, then this is seventh mode uh, first one was about uh, as the cross section is symmetric about uh, xz plane so 
a uh, the first two frequencies you should be getting a nearly same that is seventh and eighth let's go to tabular data and verify yes those are exactly same because uh, that was uh, that uh, that is the direction of minimum stiffness one is in uh, x and another one is in z uh, just by looking at the geometry you can predict that so that's why first uh, two modes are same because you have symmetric cross section about those axis then uh, second thing is uh, the first mode is in this direction because it has the minimum stiffness in that direction so i think i had covered more thanks for watching please subscribe to our channel we will meet in next video